the recording. Hi there, my name is David Batsoffin and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. At the moment, I'm a non-traveling travel writer, but I get to live vicariously through people who are at uh, places that I've either been to or want to go to. And one of the places that I have been to, and, the, and more than once, is Walkerson's um, in Dahlstrom. And today I've got Kate Christie, who's the general manager, chatting to me. Kate, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, doing well. Just very strange to not have guests on our property at the moment. You're in lockdown in Dahlstrom at the moment, on the property. That's correct, yes. There's just a few of the management team who stayed behind at the hotel um, and just to keep things ticking over so that when we can open our doors, things are ready for our guests to walk straight back in as normal. So how how do you spend your days then? Lazing about, you get up and you get up at 11 o'clock, you wander into the kitchen. Yes, no? Well, I wish. And unfortunately, <laughs> um, well, fortunately, we, we have a little flock of ducks, which my okay. gardeners normally look after. So this morning starts with letting the ducks out at 7 a.m., which is not great with the, the temps we've been having. Um, so I've had a few sort of minus seven, minus eight mornings at 7 a.m. Wow. Um, so we let, I let the ducks out and then I do, uh, admittedly, normally go back home and make a cup of coffee <laughs> and jump back into bed. Um, <laughs> and then our day sort of just goes depending on if there's some office work to be done. Um, otherwise, uh, for those who have visited Walkersons before, we've got a lot of trees. So autumn has not been the best time for lockdown. Um, we've done a lot of raking of leaves. Um, and with the leaves come blockages in, in the drains. So we, we have a daily pattern um, of checking all the drains and, and raking leaves. And now it's winter, so it's watering the gardens. So we really have um, div divulged as a, a management team into a team of jacks of, or jills of all trades, because we're all <laughs> ladies that are here at the moment. So right. we've been on roofs cleaning gutters and doing weird and wonderful things. I think it's time that you release sort of a series of videos. W women who work type of thing. <laughs> we the women there were of a few dodgy pictures. Were they? <laughs> they? Yeah, there were a few pictures in the beginning. Um, and then I actually, not even doing anything very interesting, I managed to pull ligaments in my knee. So I've been a little bit more office bound and, and couch bound for the last few weeks. Um, but now that I'm back up, I, I think I'll have to snap some shots of, of us doing strange things again. But where you are, it's a, it's a stunning valley because in the early mornings, and as you're saying, minus seven, minus eight, I'm hoping that when you do let these little things out, you sing who let the ducks out rather than who let the dogs out. Um, but And that was such an obvious one. I don't know why I went there. But you guys get mist that rolls in through that valley in the morning that is beautiful to photograph. It, it is. Um, the mist is, is stunning in the summer months. In the winter months, it's actually more clear. But we, we've had spectacular frosts that, that are beautiful, but not very conducive for the plant life. Um, so at the moment, it's very clear. We've had a lot of uh, frozen pipes. We've, we've had to deal with a few burst pipe issues when the pipes have been frozen a few times. Um, so yeah, but these beautiful, we have at the moment, beautiful clear mornings. Um, but crisp and icy, icy cold. Your ponds are not frozen, though. Those are a little deep for, for frost, for ice. Um, yeah, they, 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 where the fountains have splashed the water, we've had a few mornings where there, there are icicles hanging from the little plants, around, water plants around the, the mm -hmm. fountains, but they haven't frozen over totally. If people have driven, because I think a lot of people who go to Kruger or places up north have driven past your signboard as they leave um, Dahlstrom, many of them stopping for coffee um, as, uh, at that little uh, coffee shop just on the outskirts of Dahlstrom, and then they drive past your sign uh, because they're going further north. But I'm sure a lot of people wonder what Walkerson's is. So talk us through it. Well, and it's amazing how many of our guests, when they come to visit us, they say, oh, we've driven past your sign for years and years, and we finally decided to turn in. Um, but basically, Walkson's Hotel is on a private estate. The estate itself is about 800 hectares, so it's quite a, a vast um, piece of land. And it covers a beautiful mountainous area, as well as the valley where we've got four and a half kilometers of river frontage. 
um, and 14 trout fishing dams. So there's some beautiful areas for people to explore. Um, our guests that stay in the hotel and, and our self-catering houses have full use of the estate so they can go trout fishing or they can walk or cycle. Um, beautiful bird life. So there's a lot to do for them on the estate um, or they can sit and drink gin or, or <laughs> on the terrace if it's a nice day or uh, on these chilly days, curl, curl up next to a fireplace with a, a beautiful bottle of red wine. That would be my, my go-to uh, suggestion. Um, and then, you know, as I say, the hotel itself, we've got the restaurant, we've got a beautiful spa. So anybody who wants to have a bit of a relaxing time can and go for a massage or a facial. So these, it, it really, for me, is one of those places that you can do as much as you want or as little as you want. If you're like me, you would choose to be drinking gin or wine on the terrace. Um, <laughs> but a lot of our guests are very active and they're cyclists or they go hiking up the mountain or out there fishing from the early morning. Um, so yeah, if one, you know, you can either get out there and be active or, or chill out on the terrace. Because the accommodation is stunning and it lends itself to doing absolutely nothing, I have to say. <laughs> it does. And especially when it's chilly, every bedroom has got a fireplace. And then in the lounge and dining areas, their fireplace is pretty much every corner that you turn. So if the weather is a bit chilly, you don't have to totally stay in bed. You can find a cozy spot to, to cuddle up. But at the moment, you're not only you can't cuddle up because you're closed for the moment. Unfortunately, yes, um, it's just not viable for us to, to open just yet. We, we're hoping that it will be very soon that we can open. Um, we're basing it on when interprovincial leisure travel is permitted again. So hopefully that will be around the corner. Um, it is very strange being here with no activity. Um, you visited us before and you know our beautiful koi pond at the entrance with our yeah. huge koi in it. Sadly, that pond is now empty because the otters came up and ate all our fish. Are you kidding? Um, <laughs> we, we get a, quite a lot of Cape Clawless otters on the estate, but they don't normally come right up to the hotel because of the mm -hmm. activity. But obviously, with just a few of us around, they had an absolute <laughs> feast. They, they, it was shooting fish in a barrel for them. So, and I got it all on camera. So I, I was very upset that my fish are no longer. And I don't like otters quite as much as I used to. Yeah. I, I, I always talk about, um, they, they used to be in Reader's Digest, they used to always do animal stories. And they seem to do a lot of otter stories where people had raised otters from babies and then they go back down to the river and they release the otter and Ben the otter never looked back and was never seen again. And I'm, I, I think you're in that category where you don't want Ben the otter to be back ever again. <laughs> Well, I've always been um, for the otters. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, fishermen, the fishermen get a little bit upset, and I've always been the one who said, well, otters are far more attractive than trout. So um, <laughs> I've been very much in favor of otters for the, the time that I've been here. Um, but, yeah, my view Not has so changed much. ever so yeah. slightly. <laughs> but now that they've eaten all, your, all the koi, are they still wondering about looking for other sort of snacks or have they gone back to the river and just stuck to eating your trout? They, they're very much um, active in the trout dams mm -hmm. um, and especially the growing out ponds where, where the estate <laughs> management team are trying to get some nice uh, trophy sized trout going. The, mm -hmm. the otters have been pretty active there. So we've actually, uh, they've covered one of the growing out ponds with a, the with a wire mesh cover so the otters can't get in there. So there will still be some nice big trout to release into the dams. Um, but yeah, they, the otters are very active. Um, the jackal are around. We've got a healthy population of jackal. They've been coming around. I had a porcupine in my garden the other day. And um, I found a, a set of aardvark tracks through the hotel front garden a couple of weeks ago. So, you, you know, these are all things that we know are here, but they don't normally come as close as, as they have been. It's interesting because a lot of uh, lodges that I've spoken to, they've said that the, the game hasn't really changed habits um, and it continues the way it's used to. But with, with uh, your game, they seem to be, the next thing they'll be knocking on the door and saying, can we have a reservation? You know, can we move into one of the rooms, please? <laughs> 
that wouldn't surprise me. Yes, they, they really um, have been become a lot more a lot more chilled. What about your horses? They yeah, um, and uh, before I did my knee injury, I was actually helping um, Dave and Chrissy, who who own the horses. I've been helping them riding every day just to keep the horses in work, mm -hmm. um, which was really great. And also from a security aspect, we were going right around the perimeter of the estates and checking fences and things like that. So yes, um, they've been they've been uh, in exercise. Two of my my assistant managers who said they would never sit on a horse, they've actually got into riding and they ride every second day now. Wow! So yeah, we we've actually really been enjoying having the horses to ourselves for a bit. <laughs> Have you <laughs> utilized this opportunity um, to maybe do some renovations or maybe look at your menus for going forward? The, the um, chef, Chef Tash, has been working on her menus and, and putting together some specials that she's got a couple of new recipes and things that we can't wait to open and then we can launch all of those. Um, as well as uh, Lizelle, who's um, been taking over food or a bit of the beverage side. So she's been putting together a, a launch cocktail menu and things like that. Um, so it, there's been a lot of behind the scenes work going on in terms of those things. Um, and we're now just waiting for an opening date. And hopefully <laughs> we, can, we can invite everybody to share the little things we've been taste tasting. <laughs> as long as there's no sourdough bread or banana loaf, because... I don't know why, but for some reason, those two things have become the most baked goods in any household. And, and I raise our, my hand in ours as well, because we do one sourdough a week and then maybe a banana bread every second, every second week. Well, like, sourdough hasn't really been a thing in the hotel. Um, I never want to see another lemon meringue pie. Oh, um, no, we... no, 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 okay. <laughs> Don't do that. One thing that's one thing that's been doing incredibly well and always does is our lemon trees here. Um, we've got the lemon tree at the, our signature lemon tree on the front lawn. It's it's yeah. a round lemon tree. It looks like a lot. We call it the lollipop lemon tree. Um, and then we also have a few lemon trees in the veggie garden. And with the hotel not operating and not a lot of people around, our lemon crop has just, I can't give lemons away fast enough. <laughs> so I've made lemon cordial. Um, I've made lemon meringue pies. Anybody who might be passing or I might be passing their house and they've got a birthday, everybody's just been getting a lemon meringue pie. I never want to see one again. Um, well, you're, you're taking <laughs> that old adage to heart. If, you, if you've got lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> make <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> I hate to see things going to waste. They've got to no, be No, no, no. I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I hadn't had a lemon meringue pie for a long time. And then it was a friend's birthday and his wife baked him one. And it, I just so happened to find a shop not too far away, a home industry place that made one. And people were raving about it. So I went and I bought it and it lasted exactly, yes. Um, it was eaten very quickly. My wife and I did pig out just a, just a tad that weekend. I think it lasted from Friday evening until Sunday morning, which is not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've got to be eaten quickly. They have to. They have to. Otherwise, they go off. People don't realize exactly. this. Lemon meringue pie goes off. <laughs> After two days finished, you've got to throw it away. Kate, take me back to Kate Christie in matric. What did she want to be? <laughs> well, that, that's actually a very funny story because when I was in matric, they had an open day at the Royal Hotel in Durban. And I got home from that open day and I said that I would never, ever in my life get into hospitality <laughs> because the hours were horrific and it wasn't something that I would want to do. So, um, yeah, I actually wanted to, to go into uh, something along the lines of veterinary, but I'm, I wasn't that smart, so I couldn't get in. Um, and I ended up actually doing a secretarial course. Um, so I was a, a good old typist for a while. Mm -hmm. And after that, I did a business management course. And I actually got into hospitality totally by mistake a couple of years later. Um, a friend of mine was working at a game reserve and I had joked and said, well, if there's, I just need to get out of the city. If there's a job peeling potatoes or making beds, give me a shout. 
And she phoned me up a month or two later and said, there's a receptionist position. They normally take sort of a school leaver, but maybe you can get in. And I mm. phoned up the lodge manager and I said, I know a bit about animals. I'm quite happy and comfortable on a reserve. I've never been to a private lodge in my life. I know nothing about hospitality, um, but I'm quite good in an office. And she said, well, when can you come for your interview? And I joined um, back in the day, it was CC Africa, um, now and beyond. And that was my, my introduction to hospitality. And it just boomed from there. And you've never looked back. Never looked back. Have you ever <laughs> well, gone back? Well, sometimes I've wondered why. But <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gone back to the Royal and sort of stood in the foyer? Because I've stayed at the Royal Hotel, so I know it relatively well. It's that stood in the foyer and gone, thank you for nothing. <laughs> I, I did go back a few years later. I must say I haven't probably set foot in the Royal and I shouldn't say how many years because it'll give my age away. But in many, many years, I, I've driven past and it's very sad what it looks like nowadays. Yeah. But It's, um, it's you definitely know, it's, changed in, in the years. Yes. I mean, I haven't been to Durban in the longest time and I certainly haven't been to the Royal in probably three decades. But the last time I was there, you're quite right. It, it, it looks like a tire. It looks it looks tired and run down, or it did. Exactly, I don't know if it's, yeah. if it's been changed or maybe even been bought over by a chain. Who knows? So, at the moment, um, given your the the situation, um, and waiting, I suppose like everybody in the tourism industry at the moment, because I suppose this is the difficulty: is there is no date because nobody knows. You know? Do you do you? Um, release the kraken and just go open the borders let everybody head out and whoever gets sick gets sick and those who survive survive or does this play out until 2021 and then only the those that can survive those um, companies that have the wherewithal to survive will still be standing let's say on january 1 2021 when when the gates are open again yeah, it's, you know, that's exactly it. I think um, I've read more news articles in the last couple of months than I have in my entire life. Um, you don't know, we, I think we've learned after four months of lockdown what sources to trust and which ones not to trust or, you know, as, trust as much as you can. But it is a case of, of just waiting. And, you know, it's, it's a, such a difficult one because yeah. for me personally I, i'm i'm the release the kraken person yeah. if i get it i get it um i i don't have close family i don't have children um and i suppose if somebody close to me did get sick my, my view may change yeah but you know i'm i'm sort of we it's out of control it's going to happen just carry on yeah. Um, it's it's very sad to to chat to the staff. I have seen our staff, um, or some of them, in the last couple of days, um, and you know it, it's heartbreaking to see them and and they're struggling along. And obviously we we all sort of holding our breath for two years. And when will that happen? Um, but yeah, I I was the release the kraken person, and then started thinking, well, all our a lot of our our guests local would be coming from Joburg and. Do we really want them to, to bring the virus here? And up until now, Dalstrom has been pretty virus free. Um, mm. We haven't had a lot of cases here. You know, I call it, Walkersons are generally called my bubble, because like you mm. say, you come down that driveway into the valley. So, you know, Walkersons is our bubble and we hardly ever go out. And, and when we do, we, we go up to Dalstrom and everybody knows everybody and you, you, know, who, you know, if there has yeah. been a case. Um, and and now that you know there is this big uh, influx and and we're getting a lot of travelers that are coming from from Joburg um on business travel um and you you know you're thinking is it do we need well we do need their business we need it yeah. to survive but you know then then on the other hand is the infection rate going to go up so oh it's it's a terrible decision to make but if you know you look at the taxi story and if they Allowing 100% in taxis, it's out there. It's going to happen. Open the borders. As long as you open a window. See, that's that's the catch exactly. with the taxis. <laughs> um, <laughs> in fact, in an article that I wrote a few days ago, I, I alluded to that because um, a lot of the tourism industry is trying to follow 
the right path. They're trying to do the right thing and they're coming up against red tape and bureaucracy. And the taxi industry just thumbed their noses and went, you know what? We're going to fill these vehicles and try and stop us basically. And then yeah. what happened was the government said, oh, well, it's okay, you can fill them, but you've got to crack a window to 50, <laughs> you know, five centimeters. Like, like the virus knows if it's four centimeters, then it can't get out. If it's five centimeters, then it can get out or get in. Who knows? You know, this is, I think, the weird thing, Kate, is that it's such an unknown. And that, I suppose, if you go back, the only thing you can compare it to is maybe the Spanish flu. But then we didn't have all the, the social media around it. And everybody's talking about terrifying this and, terri you know, scary that. And, and the media, I think, is a lot to blame. But by the same token, I think, as you rightly pointed out, even if you were to open, people are not going to come back immediately because they are worried about who else is going to be on the property with them and where those people are. And sitting in a dining room, for instance, um, as you said earlier, the, the numbers don't allow you to fill the dining room. Um, you've got to keep social distancing. So there's all of that to take into consideration. And I think the mindset of the people who come to visit you needs to be altered again. We all need to learn how to interact with humans once again. Yeah, it's a, the new normal is, is, is going to be something that's going to evolve when, yeah. when we can open our doors. Um, I went to the big city the other day, you know, Leidenberg, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, just the, the way things are done. And most people are very accommodating and very pleasant. And, but, you know, it's, it's just um, things are done differently. And, yeah. and I think a lot of guests... Are they ready to? People are ready to travel. The phone mm. is ringing. People want out of Joburg. They're sick of being co cooped up. And yeah. um, unfortunately, you know, the regulations at the moment just don't allow us to do that um, as we would want to and, mm. and to do it legally as such. Um, but they, you know, I think local tourism, I think for us being with the proximity from Joburg and Pretoria, I think that first little bit when we can open we're going to get a rush. People want to be out, get out of the city. Yeah. Um, and then I think when people have spent that little bit of money they have saved, um, then we might see it slack off after a month or two. Um, but yeah, the, the business is there and people are wanting to get out. And for me, you know, a place like Walkerson's is where you want to come. The, the you know, rooms are quite well distanced from each other. You can go out on beautiful walks. You don't need to be on top of each other. We have, we've already reset the dining room. So there's social distancing. You know, we've got lots of different dining areas where we can space people out. So, you know, it is, for me, there's a, a lot of positives of coming to a place like yeah. Orkison's. You know, I, have to, to. I have to agree with you because it's all of those things. And as you were saying earlier, it's in a bubble because it's in the valley. And once you come down that long driveway um, and end up right at the bottom of the valley, or you can fly in if you, if you really want to be fancy, <laughs> there is an airstrip. Um, I do believe that, that people will come and, you know, it's almost like post zombie apocalypse. You, you could have the last survivors <laughs> of living in Walkerson's for the foreseeable future. I could, I could think of worse places to be in lockdown, though. Definitely, definitely. Um, we, we, we are very, very lucky to, to be where we are. You know, we, we have a lot of jokes. Um, the team that are left here, we, we get on very well. So there, there's a lot of funny things that have happened. We probably shouldn't put those on any public platforms. Um, <laughs> I, was ab I was about to say, come on, share, share one story with me. And the, and no, the viewers. Oh, we, well, we, we've just had funny situations and thankfully, the, as I say, the girls that are here, we've all got great sense of humor and, you know, we've had people face planting into to flower beds. We've had photos of me with my bum in the air cleaning a drain and um, <laughs> very unladylike, um, you know, and then as I say, I, I had a, a the little incident where I couldn't walk for a few weeks. So these poor girls were practically carrying me around and I was pointing with my crutches, go do that and have we checked this and... and uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so, so we have had a good time. Um, we're all looking very well-rounded. We, we definitely not in zombie state. And the what? lemon meringue pies have taken their toll. <laughs> what did I see yesterday? It was a meme on Facebook that said something along, why um, do these jeans make me look fat? Um, husband, you were fat before quarantine. Cause of death? <laughs> COVID-19, 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I, it's, you, you talk about the new norm, you know. I, t I don't know why, but I tend to, to sort of eat during the day and then comes dinner time and my wife says, what do you feel like? And I go, I'm not actually hungry. And then I realize that I've been eating almost consistently throughout the day. And invariably it's, well, not quite lemon meringue pie, but as I say, there's sourdough bread in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we normally work on, on hotel time and, and I think um, a lot of people in, in the hotel industry, especially in management levels, you tend to not eat very well because mm. you, you eat once you finish with all your guests. So it's you eat breakfast at lunchtime and you eat dinner when all your guests have pretty much gone to bed. And now to be able to, to actually um, have proper meals at normal <laughs> times, it's it's... I don't know how I'm going to go back to um, yeah. <laughs> running around and, and drinking cold coffee, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very confusing when the guests do return and you have, to, you have to fall out of the current norm and go back to where you used to be. And, you know, you sort of walk in for breakfast and go, no, I can't do that. They're guests here. I've got to wait until they fall disappear. <laughs> exactly. And, um, you know, just, just the... Uh, you know, I'm going to have to dress properly for work. Um, <laughs> yeah. in a, in a, okay, I can't, I can't live in leggings for the rest of my life. <laughs> now, you see, that, that's, that's the thing about, about these Zoom chats that I do. Um, I am wearing clothes. Uh, I, I, do, I do have something on other than just the hoodie. Uh, but they're tracksuit pants, which I've lived in <laughs> since, literally lived in since, the begin, since March the 27th. Because, hey, if it's warm, I'll wear shorts. But it's cold at the moment, so who can see that I'm wearing tracksuit pants? Nobody. You know, sometimes I have to remember <laughs> not to stand up. <laughs> well, as long as you've got pants on, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> when, when, when lockdown first started and these Zoom conferences were, were not quite the thing that they are now, um, there was one, and he made it onto, onto social media. His name was Ben. And the poor fellow, it was a business call. So there were eight or nine people on the Zoom conference and he didn't realize that his camera was on and he was walking towards his laptop and he was stark naked. And the people <laughs> are screaming at him, Ben, your camera is on. And he's getting closer and closer going, what? What are you saying? <laughs> so he's... For, for 15, all of 50, his 15 seconds of fame, his, his genitalia became famous. <laughs> well, it's a bit cold to do that around here at the moment. <laughs> As you but... imagine it, minus seven or minus eight. Mm -mm. <laughs> Going nowhere, I'll do it from bed if necessary. Um, Kate, for people who, who, are th who are planning ahead, and I'm sure people are already going, you know what, let's just write off 2020 and let's make bookings for 2021, or as I'm calling it, 2020.2, um, because I don't think we'll have a 2021. We're just going to upgrade 2020. <laughs> yeah. um, can they start making bookings now? Are you taking for, for next year already? And if so, how do they go about it? We are taking bookings for next year. Um, our reservations team are still working remotely. So um, they can welcome to email on reservations at walkersons.co.za um, and send any inquiries through on, on that uh, email address. As soon as we have an opening date as well, we, we've got some great opening up, up uh, specials. So those are, are waiting in the wings. And as soon as we get that announcement that interprovincial leisure travel is, is ready to be opened up, then we're going to be launching some fabulous specials, which will be valid for the next six months, um, oh, probably. Um, so yeah, to keep an eye on our Facebook page, um, and our website, um, that's where everything will be launched as soon as we, we have 
something a little bit more concrete to go on. I tell you, whatever that date is going to be, there are going to be fanfares, and trumpets will, <laughs> will be blown, fireworks will be set off. But I think the bottom, the, the bottom line, if, if we were to take a positive out of this, is that everybody has missed the winter because they're going to come back in, in spring because the 1st of September is spring day. So they've missed all the cold and now they can just step into, into a whole reawakening, basically, which is going to be great for you guys and great for, for people who are going to be visiting Walker Center. Well, and, ho and hopefully our, our um, not so great gardening skills have pulled the garden through the winter. <laughs> I, I'm very good at watering and raking, and that's about as okay. far as my gardening skills go. Okay. But uh, <laughs> you, you pivoted, and got to, I've I've learned three things now, um, or two, because I knew about the reaching out that everybody knows. Pivoting, I'd never heard about, and then somebody the other day said to me. Thank you for leaning in. And I'm going like, what are you talking about? What is this leaning in of which you speak? This is the new term. If you reach out, you're now not reaching out. You're leaning in mm -hmm. to people. So Okay, well, you've, you've taught me something new today. <laughs> Down here in our bubble, we didn't know about leaning in. <laughs> well, now you can walk around and, and tell people that when you ask them questions or ask after their health that you are leaning in to inquire, not reaching out. <laughs> Kate, thank you so much for chatting to me. Stay warm, stay healthy. My guest on In Conversation with uh, today has been Kate Christie, uh, the GM of Walkerson's in Dahlstrom. You heard about uh, their website. You can find out all the details. Reservation is open. If you want to make a booking for this year or perhaps want to look ahead to 2021, Kate, I look forward to seeing you in the not too distant future. And I don't want to be driving past your son. I will make an effort the next time I'm going north to stop off and have a cup of coffee with you once we are allowed to do that. Thank you so much. And yes, we hope to see you soon. Take care. Cheers.